Are these different or the same? You recognize those as the same song, even though they're using totally different notes. And that's because you don't hear notes, you hear numbers. In this video, you'll learn the basic principle to turn all of music into the numbers one through seven. And then you'll learn how those seven numbers give you musical superpowers. Most music is based on some sort of scale. And you might think of scales like this. But I want you to think about scales more like a color palette of available notes for a piece. A piece of music that uses a certain scale is using a small collection of notes over and over to give the piece its musical character. I just played A flat major. Now I'm gonna play Happy Birthday in the key of A flat major. And even though I wasn't playing the A flat major scale, in just that first phrase of the song, by harmonizing the melody with some chords, I ended up using every single note in that scale. The birthday song uses the major scale, and it's not just folk songs and nursery rhymes that use the major scale. Most music uses the major scale. A major scale has seven notes, and they're all separated by either whole steps or half steps. A half step is the very next available note. A whole step is two half steps. And so if we look at this A flat major scale, for example, we have a whole step, whole step, half step, whole, 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 half whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And that pattern of whole and half steps holds true for every major scale. It's what gives the scale its characteristic sound. If we start the same sequence of whole and half steps on a different note, let's pick G. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. It still sounds like a major scale. It's just starting in a different place. Even if the theory here is new to you, I would guess that your ear is already very familiar with this. If you hear me play this scale, you probably really wanna hear me finish it on G. There's a special sense of resolution or coming home when we arrive on the first note of a major scale. And this is true even if we play the scale out of order, which is often what happens in a melody. If I play around a little with notes in this scale, you can hear how when I arrive at one, it sounds like we're coming home. So one has a sound to it, and it's actually not just one. Every note of the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they all have a certain sound. We can call these numbers scale degrees. And when we recognize a melody regardless of what key it's in, that's because we're recognizing the right set of scale degrees. So let's look at how we can take any melody and assign numbers to it. We'll do this with My Country Tis of Thee. Step one, we'll figure out what key it's in. Step two, we'll number the notes of the melody based on where those notes are in the scale. I played this melody starting and ending on E flat, and a lot of times you will start and end on one. It's not always true. So it's helpful to look at all of the notes you use in the melody. And in this case, these are the five notes we use in the melody, D, E flat, F, G, and A flat. And there is only one major scale that uses all of those notes. It's E flat major. So we're gonna go ahead with E flat major and number these melody notes. One, one, two, seven, one, two, three, three, four, three, two, one, two, one, seven, one. And by the way, if you've ever come across solfege, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, those syllables are just a musical renaming of the numbers one through seven. So what I'm teaching you in this lesson is the principle behind solfege. So that's the process. And now that I've given numbers to that melody, if I want to, I can always play that melody in a different key. It's worth noting that not every melody starts on one. 
fact, a lot of melodies start on five. And one example of this is happy birthday. I had a student recently who was learning happy birthday by ear and trying to assign numbers. If you start on C and you call that one, you run into some problems because at the end of the melody, happy birthday to you, you have this B flat and B flat does not belong in the key of C major. So this student was having trouble making sense of that. And I pointed out there is a key that has one flat, it's F major. And so if you start the melody to happy birthday on C, you're actually playing in the key of F major. The melody starts on five. So if you're having trouble figuring out what number does a melody start on, what key is this melody in, your best bet is to look at all of the notes that get used in the melody and see if you can find the one scale that uses all of those notes. We can also number chords. So there's a bunch of chords you can get within any major key just by playing a note from the scale and then playing every other note going up from there in the scale. We call these the diatonic chords for any key. Diatonic just means we're only using notes from the scale. So here are the diatonic chords in C major. And we'll number them using the lowest note of the chord. We call that the root note of the chord. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And the uppercase Roman numerals refer to major chords. The lowercase Roman numerals refer to minor chords. The chord built on the seventh scale degree is always going to be diminished, and that's what that little degree sign is for. In any major key, those chord qualities, major, minor, diminished, will stay in the same place for the numbers. So one, four, and five will always be major, two, three, and six will always be minor, and seven will always be diminished. So this is what's going on when you've seen people do videos where they demonstrate playing like 100 different pop songs using the same four chords. When you go and try and play along with those pop songs, you might realize, oh, it's actually not the same chords because all those songs are in different keys. But it is the same chord functions. And most likely when you see a video where someone's doing that, they're playing songs that all use the chord functions one, four, five, and six. One, four, five, and six are by far the most popular chord functions, not only in straight down the middle pop music, but really across so many different styles of music. Even with songs that use much more advanced chord functions, you're likely to still see those most popular chord functions, one, four, five, and six, being used for the majority of the song. And now anytime you're learning a chord progression or writing a chord progression, you can number the chord progression really using the same two steps we used numbering melodies. Number one, you determine the key of the song. Number two, you assign numbers to the chords based on where their root notes are in that key. So now that you know how to number melodies and chord progressions, why would you want to do this? Well, I tell my students, using numbers gives you superpowers. And some of them are not totally intuitive. So let's talk about what they are. Superpower number one is kind of the simplest to understand. If you're able to think in numbers, you can transpose any song. You can take a song into a different key. This is really helpful as a vocalist. So say I was having trouble singing happy birthday in the key of A flat because the high note is too high for me. Happy birthday, that's really high for me. So I might wanna bring it down from the key of A flat to the key of F. And that makes the high note happy birthday and that's not quite as bad for my voice. So transposing songs into different keys, that's really helpful for vocalists. But that's actually the least consequential of the superpowers you get from thinking in numbers. My favorite is ear training. This is the whole way that my relative pitch works. When I hear a piece of music, I'm identifying the melody and the chords as numbers. This approach to ear training is called functional ear training. And this is not just a TED thing. Uh, this is really what most musicians do, especially if you have relative pitch. I've posted a couple videos recently where I demonstrate learning a pop song in just one listen uh, in real time on camera. Uh, and if you're interested in learning to do that, you can learn. It's something that I learned to do and learning to think in numbers is the way there. Superpower number three is closely tied to the ear training benefit, but it's understanding function. 
When you play songs and instead of just thinking of chord names, you're thinking of functions, one, four, six, five, you start to recognize patterns between different songs, even if they're not in the same key. So for me, numbers have not only made it easier to learn things by ear, they've made it a lot easier to memorize music, and they've made it much easier to write pieces of music because when I know that I'm in a certain key, I have a lot of great guesses for what's a chord that could work well for the next chord in the piece. So those are the three superpowers you get from thinking in numbers. You can transpose anything, you can learn by ear, and you can understand what's going on in the pieces that you play and write. Uh, and I think that those are just about the coolest things you can want to do as a musician. So as you can tell, this is my favorite topic to teach. Uh, and if you wanna start practicing this skill, turning music into numbers, my suggestion is just to take simple melodies and put them in lots of different keys. And then you can move on from that to taking simple chord progressions and putting those chord progressions in lots of different keys. I've got more videos on this topic coming soon, so remember to subscribe. And thanks to those of you who have been taking courses and booking private lessons. The links for those things are in the video description. My name is Ted. Happy practicing.